All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a very sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Gavin Scott, who is all the way over in Spain and Malaga on the coast, which I'm sure is equally, if not more sunny right now, Gavin. Sometimes it can be. We are... Uh in transition between winter and spring. So uh, we're having the odd day here and there, but generally we get 300 plus sunny days a year and it's it's wonderful. Uh, absolutely. And and uh, Gavin is an impact leader, motivation speaker, podcast hope, who leads a life of service. Um, and uh, you nowadays you work uh, predominantly with entrepreneurs and corporate clients that often recognize a moment of profound change or awakening where every decision they make becomes more conscious. And I think and what we're going to talk today about sales and, and mindset. But uh, before we even get into that, um, Gavin, I think the key piece here is where you say about consciousness, about making decisions consciously about. Uh, and, and I think that's the and I think that's where a lot of people live. And like salespeople, obviously, because of the amount of pressure is that we we make a lot of decisions unconsciously. So just talk to me a little bit about how you came to that point of realizing where everything needs to be a very, you know, a very conscious decision. Yeah, well, basically it was during COVID. Um, you know, I was really trying to affect the outside world. I was trying to do business, trying to reach out to people, uh, contact them through phone, email, uh, writing, whatever way I could, and I couldn't, you know, the world wasn't responding. And so I really quickly realized that if you can't affect the outside world, then it's time to affect the inside world. And the idea was to affect the inside world, that it would be ready for when the outside world was ready to receive me again. So I went deep inside. I went on a journey of self-discovery, a journey of self-mastery. Um, and really that led me to, to the realization that everything is about conscious choice. Uh, we have so many examples in day-to-day -day life where we are not acting consciously. We are robotic or we are programmed subjects you know we're not even beings anymore we're subjects and it's really that that i wanted to get away from and so what does that mean or how do you interpret that the very first thing i can say is nine till five work hard all your life pay off your mortgage be able to provide for your family that way of thinking, it doesn't serve us anymore because we're now in a different era in the modern world. And mm -hmm. you actually can live the life that you want to lead as opposed to live the one that you're told that you should. And so many mm -hmm. of us are caught on this hamster wheel of doing what we think is right as opposed to what is actually right for us. And yeah. When I say what's right for us, I don't actually mean what's right for us in terms of how the logical or rational mind might perceive that. Um, you know, the logical or rational mind might say, okay, we've been through COVID, we've got a bit of an issue here, there's a liquidity gap to fill, I've got to work harder, I need to provide mm -hmm. for my family, let's go out there and get a second job or whatever it might be. And that simply is not the truth. The truth is, is that we have to align with who we truly are. And people don't actually understand who we truly are. And mm -hmm. when you go on a journey of self-discovery, you begin to get an idea, a flavor, and you only truly know when you begin to master the self and yeah. uh, many different ways we can do that. But for all intensive purposes, I believe that there isn't a person on this planet that isn't deserving of a life full of joy and abundance. Nobody should be living in lack. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think peak performance is something so underrated. So 
if you're listening, just ask yourself, are you all that you can be? Yeah, and and what's what's interesting uh, what's interesting about uh, this, Gavin, is that we live in a strange world today that is doing everything in its power to prevent you from going on journeys of self discovery. Um, there's so many distractions, so much noise. Everything is, I mean, and now we have AI creating God. You don't even know if anything's real anymore. Um, but it it really is. You have to make, and it comes back to that consciousness. You have to make that conscious decision to actually go on that journey of self-discovery because everything out there is telling you not to absolutely well it comes down to always a profound moment and Mm -hmm. you know it sadly it generally tends to happen when people hit rock bottom whether that's through uh experiencing a personal tragedy or uh just you know Mm -hmm. circumstances which are dire um you know, I read in the paper the other day um, that uh, a, a lady lost nine stone and she only started losing weight when the doctors told her she was going to die. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, we don't have to get to that place before we take action. Mm-hmm. I know, absolutely. And 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 you, another thing that you mentioned there, I think that's really profound as well, that people is is discovering your purpose, like why you're doing what you're doing. And, and I think an awful lot of people in, in all, in all jobs in, in, in lives and everything, a lot of people don't ever take that step back and sort of say, why am I doing what I'm doing? Cause you mentioned something earlier that I think is also important is sometimes we don't actually know why we're doing what we're doing. We're doing it because maybe of external expectations. Maybe we think this is what we should be doing. This is, you know, this is the life I should be leading. This is the, it seems to be that all the, whatever I'm looking externally, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I don't question it. And I think that's the, that's the part of questioning because let's face it. I mean, it's, it's a hard enough world to live in. It's a hard enough world to work in. Um, And if say you're in sales, which is even harder, if you don't have a really good sense of purpose, it's going to be really hard to carry yourself through the hard times. I mean, you know, a sense of purpose is what gives us our daily energy and motivation. And a lot of people come to me not knowing what their purpose is. You know, they're stuck in this uh, rat race or hamster wheel that supposedly was meant to serve them. And Mm -hmm inevitably and unfortunately it doesn't um so yeah i I really think like if you're going to be all that you can be if you're going to seek peak performance of the self then the only way to do that is to truly know yourself and to have an understanding of yourself so what's the first step on your journey to get to uh, getting your to reorienting your mindset because obviously mindset is so critically important here that you have to again it comes back to consciousness you have to make the conscious decision that you want to that you want to evolve or change your mindset so what's the first step on that journey well if we're talking specifically about sales then what type of sales person do you want to be mm-hmm. do you want to be uh, the old school uh, secondhand car salesman that, you know, manipulates the way that people thinks and perhaps tells white lies in abundance and, um, mm. you know, not necessarily cons their customers, but uh, denies them of the truth? Or do you want the truth to lead to the sale? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, I think that's a really, that's a really good uh, distinction there. Because at the end of the day, I think that a lot of it comes down to that service mentality that you talked about earlier. If you see sales as service, then you'll go one way. If you see sales as just a transaction, then you'll go another way. But I think it's that service piece is really key. And that's something that you talk a lot about. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I have to sell my services to people. And Mm -hmm. when I first started out in this business, it was pretty uncomfortable for me because I just want to help people. But the reality is, is that money is an energy exchange. And 
we all have a value in this world and we are all rightfully uh, able to exchange our value. It's just how we come across to others, how we promote ourselves as to what our value is. So, you know, in the old days, there was much less sales. You know, you would, uh, I don't know, if you grew potatoes, you would swap some potatoes with your farmer neighbor for a leg of lamb, say, Mm. Um, you know, and it would be more about kindness and neighborly gestures. And I think if you can bring that into sales, then that's going to be really, really powerful. But the first thing to really do when it comes to the mindset and sales is to not listen to the analytical mind. So I tell people all the time, lead with your heart, not with your mind. Yeah, that's that, that's really interesting. Um, so, so let's dive a little deeper. Like, why why is uh, why is your analytical mind not the right place to start? Because some people would say, well, your heart might take you on a, you know, your heart is unreliable, whereas your analytical mind is a little bit more reliable. Why is it the reverse? Well, your heart isn't unreliable. You're just told that it's unreliable. You're programmed mm-hmm. that it's unreliable. Intuition comes from a deep connection between your heart and your spirit and so you know that doesn't include the mind and actually really what we want to do is we want to get people operating from a place of alignment mind body and spirit so Mm -hmm. trying to combine all three is the uh is the dream um but you know if you sat down and you listened to your rational mind and you wrote down what it was saying and then you took all of that away and you were empty of thought empty of preconceived concept detached from outcomes and not sort of i guess giving away your power to your emotions Mm -hmm. and you just came from a place of genuine kindness, sincerity, authenticity, and wanting to lead with heart, and you wrote down what came out, you would see a really big difference. Yeah, you know, what's really, uh, what's really fascinating about that, though, is the fact that, you know, you said, it's not, it's just not mind body, it's, it's all of that combined. And I think that's another piece is that we, particularly in, in Western society and corporate, you know, we have grown up with separating everything out, right? You know, um, mind, that's, you know, what's work body, well, that's something else that's like, you know, your hobbies, activity, whatever, but not bringing it all together and realizing that it's it's if you're going to be a peak performance you have to be peak performance across all the dimensions absolutely look i use this example all the time in corporate how is it possible for somebody in a managerial position to approach a higher level executive openly i have these concerns i think this is what could happen if generally people get shut down if they walk through the door with that and you know Mm -hmm. the phrase the door is always open isn't a real truthful phrase it's a phrase that's meant to be there to you know lead out the weak Mm -hmm. right whereas the strong don't say anything and we really need to reverse that culture because in sharing vulnerably, you're being courageous and that is strength. And I really think that that would make a massive difference to corporations if people could feel, you know, that they could approach their superiors and have a genuine heart to heart open conversation. Uh, because the other thing too is i mean i think the nature of work is evolving so much that i mean you need to have those conversations anyway because let's face it i mean as you said earlier the days of like buying a house that's close to your work and all of that or further out depending on how much of a commute you're willing to undertake those days are pretty much gone because nowadays people are looking at it and going 
why would I do that when the first moment there's a recession or something, I'm I'm going to be laid off and I'm going to be stuck in an expensive area with an expensive mortgage with no job, right? So people, there's a lot more democratization, if you like, of of employment and people can choose where they live and what they want to live and how they want to construct their their lives. I'm just not sure everybody has woken up to that idea yet, the fact that they're that they can have and should have these dialogues with their, you know, with, with their organization. And it serves both if, if both parties are in an ideal scenario for where they're both happy and productive. Well, here is a great everyday example, right? You've got a, a female worker, and you know she's happily married in a family and wants to have a child and they will literally talk about it at night when should we have the baby you know i don't know when a good time is and then you have the baby and you decide not to say for six months and you'll keep the belly you know quiet and Mm -hmm. pretend that you're eating a lot and whatever else (laughs) and the reason people do that is quite simple. They are scared of getting, you know, released from employment and quite rightly so. And so, yeah, no employer likes it when uh, an employee goes away for three, six months, whatever it might be. But, you know, I was consulting with a company yesterday. Uh, They're a real estate company. They're growing pretty fast. And I said to them, look, guys, the way you're growing, your organization isn't sustainable. Like Mm -hmm. your staff loyalty isn't there. They will go somewhere else if they get a sniff that there's a better job or commission for them. And so this idea that you're growing exponentially and you're, you're, you're becoming a bigger and better company isn't real. And what you want to do is, you know, have loyal staff, staff that want to come to work, staff that are passionate about the work that they do every day. And, you know, if you can do that, if you can employ those people, then I think what you'll find is, is when somebody goes on maternity leave, say, the people around them will naturally want to support them that they will pick up the slack and do extra work to make sure that, not that that person's missed, but that the company doesn't lose anything because their interest is invested in the company. So we've got to get away from the idea of, you know, employee and employer and really start to put ourselves on a level peg. Yeah, and I think that's going to be forced on a lot of people anyway because of the way the world is like is changing and the the way business has been reconfigured. I mean, now you have everything from you have hybrid workforces, you have completely outsourced, you have virtual, you have sometimes here, sometimes there. Um, so the old rules, you know, don't apl- don't apply anymore. I'm um, just going back to uh, one last thing I just wanted to touch on, and that was you know you mentioned the authenticity piece. And I think that's really critical because there's a lot of people talking about it right now. You hear it all the time about, oh, you need to be more authentic and all of this. And people are even saying, oh, I'll even teach you how to be more authentic, which I find quite bizarre. But there you go. Uh, just talk to me for a moment about how how do you let your authentic self come out? I mean, because that, I think, is the thing that most people, uh, you know, most people have their personas. Right. So how do you let your authentic self come out in in a work scenario? So quite simply, when you are in a space of alignment, mind, body, and soul, and you're driven by your passion and your mission, and your values align with those of the company that you work for, then you will naturally fit in more. And when you fit in more, you feel more comfortable. And when you feel more comfortable, you're more open to sharing. When you're more open to sharing, you share more vulnerably. When you share more vulnerably, you act more courageously in how you share and communicate. So, you know, it's really about getting comfortable with who you are and who you're surrounding yourself with and the communication between the parties. 
Yeah, and and I think that's a great uh, that's a great piece of advice because again, it goes back to it starts with you. It starts not with trying to change things outside and externally. It, it starts with you figuring out who you are, who what your values are, what you're passionate about. Uh, etc. Now listen, Gavin, this has been fantastic. All of Gavin's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, thanks, John. So um, I've got a podcast called Stay Outstanding. It's on all the uh, platforms. So uh, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, um, many of the others. Just put it into Google, you'll find us. Um, we're across all the social medias, just put in Stay Outstanding or Stay Outstanding Podcast. And really what I do is try to make a positive impact in this world, John. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I basically help people or corporations transform the way that they're currently operating to a, a way that gets them better results. So whether that's in their personal lives, in their business lives, in their financial lives, in their romantic lives, in their relationships, whatever it is. But, you know, what what you tend to see is the beginning is a huge step away from, you know, where they sort of say, OK, Gavin, I've experienced this transformation with you. I'm so grateful and they now have the courage and the power to go out into the world and act and be and think as their authentic selves. And that's really what I do, is I help people become the best version of themselves, help them become peak performers, help um, companies uh, work better operationally, improve sales and things like that, and much, much more. So. If you do want to learn more, look at the website, shoot me an email, uh, gavin at stayoutstanding.com, uh, or just reach out through any of our social medias. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a, a lead in question saying, I want to work with you. If you've just got a curiosity question off the top of your head, feel free to shoot it through. Absolutely. Well, listen again. Thanks again, uh, Gavin. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.